Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to this tutorial for Blackmagic Fusion in which we're going to be taking a look at the topic of easing curves. Now, I was going to start with a long and detailed explanation of the mass of these curves and how we can graph them and their application in terms of image processing. But I figured you'd probably all have turned off long before we got to the useful stuff, which is how they can be used for animation. So I've skipped all that and we're going to get straight into the good stuff now. So let's get down to it. So let's set up a little test composition. First of all, I'm going to add a background node to make it a little bit blue so we can see something. Let's just zoom to fit. I'm going to copy that, paste it. Let's make this a little bit green. Uh, let's make it 80 pixels square. So my main background is 1920 1080. That one is a 80 pixels square. And uh, let's uh, merge the two together and look at the result. And I'm going to turn off the overlay there. And I should just point out that we're using the default project duration of 100 frames. And I just actually want to make this into a little ball, which should make it look nicer. So I'm going to select that one and just add the ellipse tool and set the width and height to one. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add an expression to the merge center. So I'm going to right click on the merge center and then modify it with expression. And you'll see that's popped our ball down in the bottom left hand corner there. So we need to come to modifiers and the point out tab. So I'm just going to set the point Y to 0.5. So it's sitting there in the middle and we're going to work on the point X expression. And I'm going to set that to N1. So then let's come to the config tab and the number controls. Now what I want to do is I want to hide all but six of the controls and I'm going to rename them. So we're down to just six controls. The first one's called normalize time, that's N1, then function, then start value, end value, start time, and end time. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to enter an expression for normalized time. So right click expression. And what we're going to do is we're going to type min open brackets one comma time over N six close brackets. Oh, I should have been lowercase m for the min. So we need to set a value for N six, which is the end time. So I'm going to set that to 75. And then if we press play, we get that linear animation from left to right, ending at frame 75, as you can probably see. So it's going from left to right because it's animating between zero and one. Obviously in Fusion, zero is the left-hand side and one is the right-hand side, zero is the bottom, and one is the top on the y-axis. But we want to be able to also adjust the start time. So I'm going to adjust this normalized time expression to be able to do that. So I'm going to paste that in and you, you can see what that is on screen. I won't read it all out. It's a little bit long to read out. So now what we can do is we can set the start time. So if I set that to 25, you'll see that as I play through, nothing happens until 25 frames. And then the animation ends at 75 frames. So we've got our basic sort of timer set up now, that's good. But what we also want to be able to do is to adjust the start and end positions. So over in the point out tab, I'm going to enter an expression for the X and that's going to be this. And again, I won't read it out to you because it's a little bit long and convoluted. You can see it on screen there. And we also need to have a value for the function. So. Let's add an expression there. And just for the time being, we're literally just going to use N1. So if we set our start and end values, so I'm going to set that to say 0 0.15, 0 0.85. And now you'll see that our starting position is over here. So that's at 0 0.15 on X. And I press play, animates across, and it comes to rest at 0 0.85 on X at frame 75. So now we've got a nice linear animation. We can control our start and end values and our start and end times. But our N1 is a pretty boring function because it's literally just linear. 
So let's make it non-linear. And let's use what is known as a cubic ease in curve. So to do that, I'm going to raise n1 to the power of 3. So n1 to the power of 3. And so then let's look what happens. We start slowly and we accelerate rapidly to our end position. And we could increase that power a lot if we wanted. So go for 10 or something. And that would just exaggerate that effect. Barely starts and then really zips very, very fast. So that power function is, is a very useful way of making a, a kind of acceleration curve. But let's look at the opposite curve, which is cubic ease out. And that's what this looks like. So what that does is, if I press play, is it eases into the end position. So it's the opposite of what we did with the ease in curve. And we can combine those two curves to create a cubic ease in out. So let's have a look at that. Again, I'm just going to paste that in. So there you go, an increasingly complex expression. And what that does is it starts slow and ends slow. It's a nice smooth beginning and end. So that's cubic ease in out. So I'm going to give you a cheat sheet for these expressions in the description because they're, they're starting to get a bit too long to read out and type in, and uh, you don't want to be listening to all of that. Let's just have a little bit of a closer look at this particular expression, though, because you'll see that it uses a conditional. So if n1 is less than 0.5, use this curve, and otherwise use this other curve. And that's how we get the ease in out. But while we're talking about curves that ease in at both ends, let me just quickly show you something called smooth step, which is one of the most simple and elegant curves of all. So paste that one in, and you'll see it again. It does a smoothing just like that. And it doesn't actually, in this case, as you'll see, it doesn't need a conditional. It's a very, very simple, elegant, uh, and very, very widely used curve in, in all sorts of uh, image processing and, and animation situations. So that's smooth step, but we can get a whole lot fancier than this. And let's try something called elastic ease out. I'm going to grab that and I'm going to paste that. And now uh, let's have a look at what that looks like. And you'll see that that has this cr crazy bouncing effect. I'm just going to inc increase that end time to 100 so we can see this a little bit better. And maybe the end value needs to be further in so it doesn't shoot off the screen. And we're using things like sine and pi to get, get us there. And we could get even fancier by having an elastic ease in out. And that's going to look like this. Pretty long expression there. I keep getting longer, I'm afraid. OK, so let's have a look at that. You can see it is a little initial bounce before it gets going, which is kind of quite nice, like it's a sort of roadrunner-ish kind of animation. Very, very handy. You know, this sort of thing would be a pain to have to keyframe. And then if you wanted to change it, you would have to change, you know, it'd be much harder to change these values. Whereas here, I can just literally just change my start value while, while it's playing. And, um, you know, we've, we've, got, we've got so much more control than if we're trying to, to keyframe all this stuff. And again, you'll notice that expression uses a conditional that pivots effectively around the, the midpoint there. But for our last example, we're going to look at a technique that slices time into a number of different sections, not just the, the start and end. And it will create what is called a bounce ease out. So let me paste in that expression. It's an absolute monster, as you can see. Well, let's not look too closely at it. And let's just have a look at how it actually works. So you'll see that that bounces against the end point. Let's, let's set the end value to something like 0.95. And that's a fairly nice bounce. And it's done it by just slicing the, uh, as I say, slicing the end time into various different sections and then applying a curve to each of those. So it's an absolute monster of an expression. And it doesn't use, just use one conditional. It actually creates a nest of three different conditionals. So nested conditionals are a bit difficult to lay out in Fusion's expression editor, as you can probably see. I mean, that's pretty unwieldy. 
and you're best off just kind of pre-building them in a text editor and then just pasting them in, as, as I'm doing here. But they're perfectly possible, and they, they lead to some very, very powerful results. So let's just make it a little bit more interesting by applying it to the, the Y position instead. So I'm going to copy that X expression and paste it into the Y. And actually, before we, we do the Y only, let's just see what that happens there. So we're actually applying that to both axes at the same time. But I don't want that. I want my X expression to be 0.5. So it's in the center of the screen. And I'm just going to come over to the controls and let's just change these positions. Start value 0.95 and end value 0 0.05. And if we have a look at that, we're now getting it it's bouncing more or less off the bottom of the screen. So there are plenty more examples that we could look at, but I think that's giving you enough of a, a taste. What we've looked at is using these expressions for position only, but we could also make use of them for any other animatable parameter. So let's have a quick look at using our most recent expression on the rotation. I'm just going to disable that elliptical mask so we get a square so we'll be able to see it actually rotating. And I'm going to come over and I'm going to copy that expression for y. That's command C. I'm just going to set that y value to 0.5. So put it in the middle of the screen. I'm going to come over to Sorry, I'm coming over to the number out tab and I'm going to paste the expression that we copied. So command V. And then I'm going to come to tools and I'm going to connect the angle to that number result. And I also just need to uh, enter some slightly different values for the start and end so we'll be able to see this. So I'm going to have a start of negative 360 and an end of zero. So let's have a look. So it rotates and bounces into its final position like that. Now a bounce is probably not ideal for this, so I'm actually going to copy our elastic ease out expression into here. And I'm just going to reset some of these values. So the start value I'm going to set to negative 180. And the start and end times, let's actually start at zero. Uh, end at 100 like that. So we can get a better idea. So you can see it now very gently sort of rocks into its final position like that with that kind of elastic bouncy effect. So that's as far as I'm going to go here. And as I say, there'll be a cheat sheet in the description from which you can copy and paste all the expressions that I've used in this tutorial. Now, there are plenty of places online where you can go looking for more of these easing functions, but they'll obviously need a bit of reworking so as to be readable by Fusion's expression language. So I hope that's been a useful overview. Animating with expressions is very useful and flexible. And in focusing just on easing curves, I've only scratched the surface of what we can do. And I hope to show you some more at another time. So thanks for watching and see you again.